Hi everyone, God bless you. <laughs> Thanks so much for clicking on this video. It is a serious topic. It just so happens that I laugh a lot and um, seeing myself on camera also makes me laugh. So um, before I actually get into this video, I feel compelled to tell you what the Lord has shared with me in prayer for the past few days. And I definitely feel like the Lord wants me to share it with every person who's going to click on this video. And also I encourage you to share it um, because we are in the last days and the Lord is gathering his people together and he wants you to heed this message that I'm about to give you right before I tell you about the demon attached to the tattoo that I have. Matthew 25, starting at verse one, it says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto 10 virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door shut. Afterwards came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Glory to God. So here's the message. Everybody needs to repent. Every single person watching this video, listening to this video, you have to repent now because there will come a time where it won't matter. It'll be too late and you do not want that time to arise for you. And the Lord actually wants me to address this specifically, that there are some people who say right before I die, I'm going to repent. And the Lord told me that that is about the worst type of evil in existence, living your entire life for Satan and only wanting to give your last breath to God just so that you can make it into his kingdom. So you're essentially saying, I want to live as a child of the devil my entire life and according to the lust of my flesh, my entire life. But when I die, I want to go to heaven. The Lord wants you to repent now while you still have time. You don't know the day nor the hour when the Lord will return. However, you also don't know how, how long you have here. And when you stand before the Lord in judgment, you do not want to be ashamed. And you also don't want to be thrown into the lake of fire. Things are heating up in this world and the virus which we are experiencing now or the world is experiencing now, it's rather small and it's rather light compared to the things which are about to come upon this earth. Things are going to get much more serious and they're gonna get much more intense for Christians. And we have to have roots in us. Woe unto all of the churches who have dried roots. The Lord has been sending out messages of repentance because he's merciful and he's kind and he wants you to repent. I cannot speak for every person watching this video, but I can certainly speak for myself and say, I do fear the Lord. And when he says repent, it is time for us to repent. The Lord is attempting to save us from judgment, from wrath, and from hell. Also, he is attempting to build a real relationship with you and with us all while there is still time to. Do not be a foolish virgin. There came a point where there was no longer time. There are those who are seeking the face of the Lord now. And there are those who are playing around. And those who are seeking the face of the Lord have something that you need in order to be qualified to meet the bridegroom. And there will come a time where it will be 
too late to get it. Seek the Lord now while he may be found. Repent. Even if you have to pause this video, pause it and repent. Because it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And I've been feeling heaviness and a bit of frustration in my spirit through prayer. And in it, even this morning, in, it lingered after prayer uh, for some time. And it is concerning the different nations and also the church. Uh, the specific, the, let's see how far I can go. I'll just say for certain nations in the church, the church at large, the church in so many ways has failed and judgment will begin at the household of faith. And if you can feel the heart of God concerning truth and what his perfect will is for his church, then you will understand why. Judgment is going to begin with the saints and it's not going to be pretty. So while you have the time, repent. While you have the time, search yourself and change. Nothing on planet Earth is worth it. Find God. He said there's a narrow path and few there be that find it. And what that says to me by the Holy Spirit is if you... You, it's, it's like you have to be looking for it because he says he doesn't say it's a few people that's on it. He says it's a few people that find it. So if you want the narrow path, you have to go in search of it. OK. I always tell people whatever you see everyone else doing, ignore it. Do what the few do. That's what you do. Whatever the few are doing, whatever you feel is unpopular. Do that. It's time to be holy still and serve the Lord your God in the beauty of holiness. Holiness is beautiful and find out what that means for you, both naturally and spiritually, because the scripture says you glorify God in your body and spirit because both are God's. You've been brought with a high price. OK, so amen. In Jesus name. Amen. So I want to get into the message of what took place in my life rather recently okay I'm gonna gonna move real carefully so that my my phone doesn't fall down okay it's shaking it's shaking okay we're good we're good okay so okay I'm just gonna put this over all right all right we're good now we can go so um I'm gonna tell you about the experience that I had with my um, with the tattoo that I have. So I have five tattoos. I got them when I was not saved. Um, the last one I got is when I was 20 years old and it's on my lower back. And after that, I actually read in the Bible. Um, in one of the books of the law, it says we can't make those markings in our flesh and cuttings in our flesh. So I said, okay, no more tattoos. And I, I wouldn't get any more piercings after that either. I had a couple of piercings in my tongue. I said, okay, well, if this is what the Bible says, then I'm not going to do it because this is what it says not to do. And so that's the last tattoo um, I got. And it is in Indian Sanskrit and it says desire. Okay. And when I got the tattoo, of course, I was thinking about sexual desire. And I said, well, that's a good place to get it. And I literally was probably just bored and just went on to Jamaica Avenue, found a tattoo parlor and got a tattoo. Now, over 10 years later, <laughs> I had been experiencing some lower back pain and um, I kind of internally questioned why I was still feeling it and um, why it was still so bothersome. And I can't say it's chronic, like, you know, um, it's debilitating or it messes up the quality of life I have, but I still feel it sometime. And so just, I didn't bring it as a prayer to the Lord, but I questioned it inside myself. Like, I wonder what it is. And the response that came to mind was it's the tattoo. It's right. It's right on the area that hurts. Okay. And if you want to know, I'm just looking at notes because I wanted to remember everything. Okay, so 
um, the tattoo is what came to mind. So, okay, fine. And so then I looked up um, in Sanskrit what desire is, and um, it's the word Kama, which is attached to Kama Sutra. And um, it means lust, erotic feelings, desire. Um, so I begin to look up Sanskrit, the word desire, to see if I can find one that matched my tattoo. And I found things that looked similar, like maybe it would be a letter or a symbol, a symbol that looked like something that was on my back, but it wasn't the actual complete phrase. And um, I felt great. I felt delivered. But I wondered whether the tattoo I had was somehow connected to like a lustful feeling or not. And I remember thinking like I hadn't had any type of strange dreams or anything like that in a really long time. And I I just feel really good spiritually. And it just so happened that night that I was thinking those things that I had a dream. And in the dream, um, this person sent me a video. And in the video, he was talking to me about how badly he wanted a girlfriend and he was going to go find one, something to that effect. But he started to show his penis. And in the dream, I in my head, I said, I shouldn't be looking at this, but I looked anyway. And um, what it showed me when I woke up was that, okay, this is a spiritual issue because in the dream, I was able to understand that this is something I shouldn't see, but there was something also that kept me looking. Okay. And so um, the next day, uh, I woke up and I went again looking for this thing of Sanskrit, still couldn't find it. I contacted a professor who's like a professor of Indian, of Hindu this and um, Sanskrit. He, he knows Sanskrit like really proficient or I don't I don't know if the word I can use to describe it is fluent, but he knows Sanskrit and he teaches it. And um, he, he knows about the Hindu religion. So I contacted him. Don't know the man, okay? But I did some research just to find professors who um, teach this. And he's the first one. I felt led to contact him, so I contacted him. And I sent him a picture of the tattoo on my back. And I asked him to please tell me what it meant. I was willing to pay him. <laughs> and um, so later on that night, um, I was praying and I'm like, okay, so the dream last night was confirmation for me that something is attached to this tattoo that is not right. So what I did was I took some anointing oil and I anointed every single tattoo on my body. And I began to bind the spirits attached to or associated to or that are in me, which are connected to these um, tattoos and these markings on my body. Okay. Um, and I did want to get my tattoos removed because the first time I went through deliverance, I, and I will, I clearly remember this experience. The first time I went through deliverance, the first thing that I was, I saw were the tattoos. And if I could explain it, it, it looked like it didn't even look real, it looked like demonic stamps or markings all in my body. And I just remember thinking it's like, because the demons, they go and you're able to see and understand clearer. Okay. Things are moved out the way that were blocking you from understanding. It's not that I didn't know they were wrong. I just didn't know how demonic they were. So literally they look like demonic marks in my flesh. I can't even say it looks like English. It looked like demonic, disgusting markings all in my flesh. And I remember thinking, this is really demonic. It really is. This is from the pits of hell. This actually belongs to demons. Okay, um, I planned on getting them removed. However, I know someone who had tattoos removed. They it didn't really work. It was a painful process. Um, you have to pay for each each session, and they don't really come off. So um, I'm kind of on the fence about even trying to get them removed because I don't really want to waste my time or resources on doing something that's not going to work, and it's also pretty painful. So. That night, I went to anointing my tattoos and praying, and I told you um, what I prayed about, the binding of the spirits. I go to sleep, and I had another lustful dream. 
um in this dream i didn't see anything but um like i was on a bus and talking with a friend and it's she was with her boyfriend and i was like on the bus and i was just sitting on my boyfriend's lap and we were just talking and laughing but to me that's disgusting that's lustful and it's just completely out of my character to do something like that so of course i thought that was more confirmation of lust and it just so happened when i woke up from that dream i felt this agitation and um and i agitation to put it nicely like i felt like there was a demon that needed to come out of me and i felt just infuriated and i'm gonna do a video on self-deliverance and i'm also gonna do a video on whether or not a person filled with the holy spirit um can have a demon in them and i'll go into scripture and everything on that the best way i can by the holy spirit but i just felt agitated and i felt this agitation and i felt this this like infuriated and i knew um this was the spirit because i'm not agitated i just woke up i'm not infuriated um infuriated i made up a new word cheese <laughs> that's that spirit that was angry because it knew it was about to get cast out okay <laughs> so anyhow i um i said okay jesus i can't take how i feel right now <laughs> and i need you to be my deliverer and so i prayed for deliverance and i wanted to know the name of the demon so i can call its name and cast it out so I say, um, basically, I can't really explain the process to you right now, but the demon said its name was Brahma. Okay. So this is the name that is in my head that I'm hearing. Brahma. Brahma. And I'm like, these demons are playing with me because I'm supposed to be casting out Kama. What is your name? Brahma. Why are they playing with me? What is your name? Brahma. It was very serious. It may have also cursed me out in the in the process. And um, but that's the name that it announced itself as. I said, okay, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Demons don't typically lie about their names. Um, they're very open with their identity when it's time for them to go. They let you know who they are, and they'll probably even let you know how they affected the person if um they get the opportunity to speak. Okay. So I cast Brahma out. Long story short, cast Brahma out. I said, man, that is like a supreme Indian God. How did he get in there? What? So that afternoon, I'm still searching. I'm like, what is on my back? I know it's Sanskrit, but what is it? As I'm searching through the Sanskrit alpha alphabet, okay, <laughs> the professor contacts me back. I hear the email come through and I'm like, I stop researching and I go read my email. And he says, my tattoo means prayer, petition, desire. And he didn't want any money. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and so I said, that's not good. Because it's like, when I put that on my body, I was petitioning a god of hinduism and the the main god is the gods who attention i grabbed with that tattoo so i'm gonna i i did some research on prayer after i got that i i looked up different just different websites i'm pretty careful about going too deep into things that will show me you know hindu incantations or hindu prayers or things like that because now um that is getting into occult stuff which i don't want to read okay i love knowledge but it's, i i have limits okay so this is basically what I was, I conjured up when I got this tattoo. <sighs> Let's see what I'm gonna read. Space is the personification of Brahma in the objective plane. It is considered to be the medium of the sound while space itself is considered to be a subtle body of Brahma. 
I'm going to go down. Therefore, from this perspective, prayer is the means to communicate with God through the immediately available mediums of space, speech, sounds, and sacrifices. And I want to let you know that that blood that was drawn when I got that tattoo, that blood that dripped out of me was a sacrifice to that disgusting demon Brahma. It says our prayers travel from the earthly plane to the heavenly plane through space propelled by the power of Brahma, who is hidden in all sounds, especially the sacred chants of the Vedas. So um, it says sounds can reach what the eyes cannot reach, what the eyes and sounds cannot reach, thoughts can reach. Since a prayer is a combination of thoughts and sounds, it is a very powerful way to communicate with the subtle gods of both the mind and worlds above. So I want to um, kind of explain to you really briefly why I had those like uh, the dreams about lust is because when I got that tattoo, it was kind of like I was making a petition for a lustful spirit. OK, so when you live in the world and you're a fornicator, um, giving into lustful indulgences is not strange to you because that's what you do. You fornicate. You do perverted things in the bedroom. But when you become saved and, you know, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, those are not things that are normal for you anymore. Those are things that you reject. So when I had those dreams, I instantly knew something was wrong. So I just wanted to let you know why that spirit of lust showed up. It's because it was, it's like I asked Brahma to bring it in because in my mind, again, that desire meant lustful desire, but it was actually like I was petitioning Brahma for lustful desire. And so I hope that you all understand that. And so I just want to give you this message. First of all, Christians, please understand that there are a bunch of false prophets out there. Do not get markings on your flesh. The way the Lord made you is the way he wants you. And contrary to popular beliefs, it does matter. I don't care who's prophesying. I don't care who's popular. I don't care how many members are in a person's church. I don't care how cool you think someone is. Tattoos are demonic. And anyone who continues to get them after they found Jesus as their risen savior and claim to know him, they are operating in error. Do not follow them. These are wolves in sheep's clothing. They need deliverance and don't know it. Okay? Do not get tattoos. Tattoos are demonic and attached to your tattoos are demons. Tattoos belong to demons. The concept of tattoos belong to demons. This is why when God was separating Israel as a people, he said, do not do this. This is not for the people of God. And Jesus did not hang on the cross for you to go and do what pagans did. We have to understand that we are saved by grace. But now that we have that grace, it should enable us to live right and not like heathens. Because we do not want to abuse the grace of God. I pray you hear me and you hear me clearly. Evidence of the Holy Spirit is convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. People are not giving messages of repentance anymore. People don't want you to feel convicted about how you're supposed to live anymore. But I'm here to remind you that the Lord your God is holy and he commanded us all to be holy as he is holy. You need to stop marking your flesh and you need to get serious with the Lord. You need to get on your knees and repent because the day of the Lord is coming soon and you don't know when it's coming. Get your oil now. Stop living for this world and start living for the Lord your God. In Jesus' name, amen.